Welcome back everyone. We are going to continue our discussion from the last class in which we saw uh, basically we learned about Duhamel integral and we also saw that how to obtain solution of a single degree of freedom system subject to any arbitrary excitation. Okay. Now we are going to discuss some of the specific cases uh, of pulse excitation as well as step forces and then see whether how we can obtain the analytical response of a single degree of freedom system. Last class we saw that if we have some arbitrary excitation, okay, so if we have the equation a single degree of freedom system which is represented by let us say this differential equation, okay, and I am not considering damping here for the time being and if Pt is some arbitrary excitation, okay, so we derived a integral which is called a convolution integral okay to find out the response to any arbitrary excitation p of t and the idea behind that was that if i have let us say any random okay any arbitrary varying load or excitation pt then the response at any time t okay to get this response we divided this force into very small duration forces okay and we said that these forces small duration forces would basically represent a impulse okay so they would represent each of them an impulse and the response at time t would be sum of responses due to each of impulses okay and as we know the response due to an impulse is basically free vibration with initial velocity. How okay, can we sum up all those responses up to time t to get the response ut at time t? So basically, we derived the expression first for Duhamel uh, convolution integral, and we saw that we can substitute the value of unit impulse response function to get the Duhamel integral. Okay, so. I'm just going to write the final expression. Okay, so for an undamped system, we got this expression. Okay. So we can utilize this expression to get the response. Okay, and similarly for damped system as well, we can write down the Duhamel integral. But now I would have omega t here in this. There would be a e to the power minus theta this term here times sine omega t t minus tau d tau okay and we discussed that in some cases Duhamel integral is very useful to get the response okay analytical response of function ut something like this okay and in some cases you can use the conventional method of solving the differential equation and it will purely depends on the problem okay so we'll have to inspect the problem and look at the integrand that you have inside that integration to see which would be easier okay so utilizing this basically we obtain response to a step force which is represented something like this okay so force sorry there is no okay so this is a step force okay with suddenly applied low of load of magnitude p naught and then it is maintained over time as p naught okay and we found out the response to this okay as ut equal to ust naught which was p naught by k times 1 minus cos omega nt and then we found out what is the response due to a linearly increasing force which let us say this is pt here and this is t and let us say this force is represented by p naught t by tr where p naught is basically this amplitude which is achieved over time duration of tr okay so during the linearly increasing or uh, linearly increasing phase we try to obtain the solution ut as ust naught okay 
times t by tr times sin omega n okay times t divided by omega n tr so as you can see it is vibrating at frequency omega n around its static solution which is represented by this here so ust is represented by this p naught t by ktr which is basically this function here okay so this is so we saw that tr by tn is a very important parameter here and we are further going to discuss that today okay so let us now discuss so we stopped at this point and let us now discuss what happens to the response during the constant force phase okay so what we are going to do today is basically a step force okay with finite rise time all right and this is a better representation of force that is applied in real life so if you think about it it is almost impossible to apply a sudden force there is always some duration however small it may be okay over which this p naught or the amplitude of the force that is achieved okay so in general i can represent any force okay that reaches to its maximum value p naught through a uh, step force with a finite rise time okay and we can also call it a ramp ramp force okay so basically the problem statement that we have here is basically i'm applying a force which goes to its amplitude p naught over a time duration tr okay and then it is maintained at that value p naught okay so if i want to find out the response to this uh, step force let us see how to do that okay so our differential equation would be mu dot plus ku that is equal to pt okay and this is basically equal to p naught t by tr for t smaller than tr okay so for this zone here okay i'm representing this function okay all right and for a constant force phase of course it would be p naught for t greater than tr so for this we have already obtained the solution and let me write that again okay i have obtained the solution as ust naught times t by tr minus sine omega n tr divided by omega n tr okay and this is for t smaller than tr now let us obtain solution for the second part now if you look at it okay the second part we have something like this okay and we know this is nothing but the differential equation for a step force that we had done previous to this step force with a finite rise time so basically what i'm trying to do here the total response at any time after the rise time tr would be okay i'm going to divide this force into two so this and this here okay so let us say and this is p naught okay so up to this point my single degree of freedom system would have achieved some displacement and velocity okay so if you represent this instead of pt if you say that let us this let us say this is ut it would have achieved some ut here and some u dot okay let, let us say not ut but let us say this is utr and then u dot tr okay and for a linear system if i'm representing the total solution okay to this step function as a sum of solution to this linearly increasing phase up to time tr and then a step force from point tr onwards it would be basically with this initial condition it would undergo free vibration right that we already know however note that the motion starts here at tr instead of t0 okay 
And in this case, we already know what is the solution for this one, isn't it? We know that. Okay, for this step force, the solution is basically. Okay, so this is step force, and the solution I can write it as UST naught one minus cos omega nt. Okay, and again uh, remember that this is starting at t equal to tr. So this t I will have to shift to tr. Okay, so if I sum it up, basically what I have here, the total response can be represented as free vibration response due to linearly increasing phase. Okay, and because it is starting at t equal to tr and not t equal to zero. I am basically shifting it by tr so that my time okay variable is represented by now t minus tr okay and this I will write it like that sine omega n minus t minus tr okay plus there's a constant force phase okay for which the response I can again write it as ust naught okay. 1 minus cos omega n t minus tr. All right. Now, this, this is the free vibration phase response due to free vibration. And this is the constant force phase. Okay. So, this is the response due to free vibration. This is the constant force phase. Now, in this, I can substitute the value of u of tr and u dot of tr by substituting t equal to tr in this expression first and then differentiating it and then again substituting t equal to tr. Okay, so I will do that. What I am going to do here, just write the final expression. Okay, so that my u of t is equal to u s t naught okay times 1 plus omega ntr times 1 minus cos omega ntr okay times sine omega n t minus tr and then i have sine omega n tr times cos omega t minus tr okay so this is the expression that i have and if you look at it this is nothing this is a constant here okay you can call it a and this is another constant is b okay and these are coefficients to sin omega n t minus tr and cos omega n minus tr so this is basically something of form a cos theta and then b sin theta Okay, and we will utilize this property later when we have to find out the maximum value of ut. Okay, but right now let us further simplify this so that my ut becomes ust naught and the terms that I have inside the bracket, okay, it reduces to omega ntr and then I have these terms here omega ntr minus cos omega t minus tr okay all right so if you look at it here okay the i can write down my ut divided by ust naught as this function that i have inside this one okay sine omega n and i can do maybe one more thing Remember omega and tr, I can write it as 2 pi tr by tn. Okay, so let me substitute that here so that I get this one as okay, tn divided by 2 pi tr and then inside I would have this sine term okay, 2 pi tr by tn okay then this cos term here which would be cos 2 pi t by t minus 2 pi 
टी आर बाई टी एन ओके ऑल राइट सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस केयरफुली ओके माई सिस्टम इज वाइब्रेटिंग एट फ्रीक्वेंसी एज फ्रीक्वेंसी ओमेगा एन और द टाइम पीरियड टी एन ऑल राइट सो दैट इज क्लियर इट वाइब्रेट एट इट्स नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ओके एंड माई रिस्पॉन्स एक्चुअली डिपेंड्स ऑन द वैल्यू ऑफ टी आर डिवाइडेड बाई टी एन नोट दैट इट डज नॉट इंडिविजुअली डिपेंड्स ऑन टी आर और टी एन ओके इफ यू लुक एट इट इट इज ऑलवेज इन द रेशियो फॉर्म एनी वेयर इन दिस एक्सप्रेशन हेयर फॉर यू टी डिवाइडेड बाई यू एस टी नॉट ओके सो इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द रेशियो सो I might have different ratio of T R by T N. For example, one divided by two or two divided by four. As long as the ratio is still the same, I would get similar kind of dynamic response for my system. Okay, so that is an important point that the response actually depends on the value of T R, which is the rise time divided by the time period of the system. Okay, so that need to be kept in mind. Okay, so If we want to plot this for different value of T R by T N, okay, I will have okay the response of the system. Okay, so let me just uh, copy that and then show you how does it look like. Okay, so if you look at carefully here, okay, so. what these plots basically represent the ratio of the dynamic displacement versus peak static displacement okay and these have been plotted for different values of tr by tn okay and the horizontal axis is basically the normalized time okay so if you look at it when my tr is very small like this okay in this case note that there are two lines here the dotted line is actually it is static displacement which is nothing but u static of time variation of the static displacement as p t divided by k okay so this is the static displacement assuming my system does not have any mass so that i can write it as this and which for this case like you know is simply this dotted line that has been shown here okay the dynamic displacement is basically shown here using the solid line okay so the solid line is my dynamic displacement now let us start with the smallest value of tr by tn okay so let me draw a representation of this one when tr by tn is something like this okay it is starting from zero but the rise time is very small okay the response that i see it is similar to a step force and that should be obvious considering okay for very small value of tr by tn okay the force actually resembles a step force so this is p not by k displacement and then my system basically vibrates around the static equilibrium position which is around the point p not by k okay so i can see here that my solution or my Uh, system actually vibrates around the static equilibrium position okay and the vibration the amplitude the amplification or let us say difference between the dynamic and the static it's quite large okay now as i increase that as i go from tr by tn to this value that i have here okay so as i go from tr by tn to tr by tn equal to 0.5 i see that there is still lot of vibration so there is still like you know significant difference between static and dynamic however in this case that difference has actually been reduced okay compared to tr by tn equal to 0.2 so as i increase my okay as i increase the rise time okay the difference between the static displacement and the dynamic peak displacement actually reduces okay and that is further reinforced by the fact when you look at tr by tn equal to response for tr by tn equal to 1.5 and then further response for tr by tn equal to 2.5 okay for the value very large like tr by tn equal to 2.5 you can see 
the dynamic solution almost trailing the static solution so it is almost like you know close to very close to the static solution so that means if i have rise time which is okay which is very very large okay which is very very large then my dynamic solution is almost close to the static solution and i don't see much difference or i don't see much amplification of the response okay so in this case depending upon the tr tr by tn okay the dynamic characteristic of the response is determined so tr by tn is a very it's a very important parameter to characterize the response to a step force with finite rise time okay uh, there are two additional cases when tr by tn is equal to 1 and when tr by TL, tn is equal to 2 or for a matter of case whenever you will have tr by tn equal to n okay where n is equal to 1 2 3 so on integer value what you will see okay at the end of the linearly increasing phase you do not get any oscillation okay so no vibration during the constant force phase okay and why that happens is actually when you have this condition your velocity actually is equal to zero at time t equal to tr okay so for that case if the velocity is equal to zero basically if you substitute in the expression for ut you will get ut as equal to ust naught okay which would be constant and not vibrating with time and if you want to imagine this physically think it like the equilibrium position under the action of load p naught is actually at a displacement p naught by k so if you apply a static load of p naught the equilibrium position is p naught by k and let us say i have a spring which is okay vibrating around this p naught by k now when it comes to this displacement p naught by k and if your velocity is zero then what do you think will happen remember in previous instances of free vibration okay when you had system undergoing through the equilibrium position it had the maximum velocity and zero displacement measured from the equilibrium position so if i measure the displacement from the equilibrium position when it crosses here it will have zero displacement and it would be in equilibrium because that is the equilibrium under the load p naught so if it's in equilibrium and there is no velocity there then there is nothing that would take the system beyond this and then bring it back here okay so and that happens for very specific case when tr by tn is equal to any integer okay so for those cases when the system passes through equilibrium basically it has zero velocity and then there is nothing that would take the system further on to continue the vibration okay so that's why for these cases you get this kind of response no no vibration during the constant force phase okay all right if this is clear now let us look at if you remember for a harmonic excitation okay we had defined a function rd which we said is the ratio of maximum peak dynamic displacement divided by the peak static displacement okay and that was a function of omega by omega n and this was for the harmonic case now i want to do something similar for a step force with finite rise time or for the ramp load okay however there is no frequency here there is no excitation frequency in this case okay so let us see what do we get okay as the value of u naught by ust naught okay and then we will try to go more into the expression okay so if you remember my ut okay i wrote down an expression for ut which was ust naught okay times 1 plus 1 divided by omega tr and then there was this term here 1 minus cos omega n tr times sin omega n t minus tr and 
then there was this term here omega n t r okay times cos omega n t minus t r okay now if you look at it as i previously stated this is a constant and this is also a constant only this and this okay sine and cos functions are basically functions of time so you can say this is a and this is b and this is as sine theta and let us say this is cos theta okay so this is something like this a x sine theta minus cos theta and again this is also a constant so maximum value of the dynamic displacement basically depends on the maximum value of this expression here and as we know if we have a function of the type a sine theta minus or plus cos b cos theta the maximum value is always a square plus b square okay okay because i have this term sine theta minus phi whatever i can write it and the maximum value is actually a square plus b square under root okay so i'm going to do that okay i'm substitute it here okay and when i simplify this i will find out that my u naught by ust naught is actually this expression here okay i can just i'm just going to write the final expression okay so this is phi sorry this is tr here phi tr divided by tn and this divided by phi tr by tn so again if you look at carefully and let us say this is my rd now okay this depends on the value of tr by tn so like for a harmonic excitation of a single degree of freedom system the parameter on which the response modification factor okay depends on is omega by omega n for a ramp loading that parameter is tr by tn okay and i can go ahead okay i can go ahead and plot this function okay rd okay function as a value as a function of basically tr by tn so for different values of tr by tn i'm going to basically plot this function okay now i can do that mathematically or before doing that mathematically let us see for extreme cases what happens i have already told you when tr by tn is very very small okay it's very very small okay for those cases this is almost like a step function okay this is a suddenly applied force okay suddenly applied force okay and for suddenly applied force we saw that my ut was approximately two times ust naught okay that means rd was actually equal to two and that we saw that from this graph okay if you look at it it was almost close to two rd here was almost close to two here okay so this is one extreme case other extreme cases when tr is much much greater than one okay so this is this would be like a uh, slowly applied force okay so for slowly applied force we saw that ut was all, almost same as the static displacement so the peak basically the sorry this should be here u naught not not ut okay and here also this should be u naught so u naught is almost equal to ust naught okay because my dynamic displacement was actually okay very come very much comparable to the static displacement throughout the time so rd is actually equal to one okay so for these two extreme cases we know that for very small value of tr by tl but for very large value of tr by tl what is the value of rt okay now we also said that if tr by tn okay equal to some integer okay then for those cases there is no vibration due to constant during the constant force phase okay and if there is no vibration it means that static and dynamic are basically same so again for those cases as well u dot the peak dynamic displacement is actually equal to peak static displacement so r is again equal to one okay so we 
utilizing these three cases, situations or scenarios, let us see if we are able to plot RAD versus TR by TN. Okay. All right. So we have, let us say, we have said that. We have said that when TR by TN is very small, the value is actually 2. So it is somewhere around here. When it is very large, okay, then it is close to 1. And we have also said that it is equal to 1 at integer value of TR by TN. So let us say this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and so on. So basically the actual response looks like something like this. Okay, with this decreasing with time okay all right so depending upon the value of tr by tn okay we can calculate rd and the same thing can also be obtained using you know the expression for rt okay but we have just tried to obtain this using the analytical or discussion that we just presented now a point here to note that how much would be the RED, how much different it would be from the static displacement. If this is 1, let us say this is 2, this is basically static. It depends on the value of TR by TN. Okay, and remember these TR by TN decides, okay, whether it is going to be a suddenly applied force or whether it is going to be a slowly applied force. Okay, so whether it would have dynamic effect or whether it would be almost same as static and it would behave like a static. Okay, now this is a very important parameter because most of the loads when it is said that the load that is being applied is let us say 10 kilo Newton. Okay, before this, okay, before this course, you did not care about knowing how the load was applied. So what was the time variation of the load? And if somebody says to you that something is applied slowly, it does not simply means that it takes long time to actually apply that load. You also need to know, okay, whether the time, how long is that time with respect to the time period of the system. Okay, so that is a, that is an important parameter. So, I like to give you an example. Okay, so whether something is slowly applied or whether it is a static force, Okay, and whether some uh, a load is like you know where suddenly applied and whether it is a dynamic, it depends on this overall ratio. Okay, so let us say I have two bridges. Okay, one is okay, one bridge is basically uh, a rope bridge, okay, which is very flexible, and the second one I have is actually a concrete bridge. Okay. Now let us say for the rope bridge, my frequency is around 2 second, uh, sorry time period is around 2 second and for concrete bridge let us say it is around 0.1 second, okay, which is typical, you know, because it is very flexible, the rope bridge it would have, okay, very large time period compared to concrete bridge which has a very small time period of 0.1 second. Now whether something is slowly applied or whether it is, uh, you know, suddenly applied depends on this ratio. So, let us say I want to apply a load, okay, so, so that the dynamic effect is very, very less, okay. So, let us say I can do that for, let us say, TR by TN. If this ratio is very, very high, okay, then I can say that there is no dynamic amplification, okay. Uh, my RED would be equal to 1. Okay, so it would behave like a static. Now, to achieve the static type condition, okay, in this case, the rise time has to be 2 times 10, 20 second. And in this case, the rise time could be just 2 second. Alright, so if you see that here, okay, for this row, because it is very flexible, you need to be applying the load at a much, much slower pace or over a very large duration of time to achieve similar kind of response, okay, compared to concrete bridge in which you can apply the load much quickly and still be able to obtain similar kind of response. 
okay and like you know you can observe this realistically as well if you jump on a rope bridge it will start oscillating so you will see much more dynamic effect okay so remember you are applying similar kind of load over a similar duration okay so if you jump on a rope bridge or if you jump on a concrete bridge you are applying similar load over a similar duration however because the time period of the two bridges are different you would see basically different response okay so keep that in mind that whether something is static or dynamic okay it depends on the ratio tr by tn and slow whether something is applied slowly or suddenly okay it is not only a function of time okay time is relative it is actually depends on in a structural dynamics whether something is slow or fast it depends on the ratio of the duration with respect to the time period of the system okay so this is something that you need to keep in mind tr by tn which is a very important parameter all right so with this we saw that how to get the response of a system subject to a ramp loading or basically a step forward with a finite rise time okay now what we are going to discuss a different type of excitation which is basically called pulse excitations okay so we are going to get into pulse excitation okay pulse excitation is basically any type of excitation that has a finite duration of application okay and then it is zero okay so you have a load that is applied over a finite duration and then it is zero before and after that so some of the examples would be okay a load that is applied like this okay or a load let us say which is applied like this or load that is applied like this okay or uh, you could have a different type of load even this is okay so any type of load that is applied only over a finite duration of time is called a pulse load and as you can imagine if you apply a pulse load then the system does not actually achieve any like in a steady state response it would always be vibrating and depending upon whether the system has damping or not it might come to rest for a damped system or it might always keep on vibrating okay with the initial conditions provided by this pulse type motion okay so you know there are different type of you know, several type of pulse type excitation okay what we are going to study first is basically a very common type of pulse excitation which is rectangular pulse excitation so for a rectangular pulse excitation basically i have a rectangular pulse force of magnitude or sorry amplitude p naught applied over a time duration of td so now, now there is a new parameter remember there was a rise time in the previous case that we had discussed now that there is a different parameter it's called td okay so the load rectangular pulse is applied suddenly it is kept constant till the time duration td and then it is released so that force is zero okay and the system that we have to find out the response of the system subject to this type of loading okay so I can again go ahead and write down the equation of motion as mu double dot plus ku equal to p of t where p of t is basically p naught for t smaller than td and equal to 0 for t greater than td okay and in terms of solution we are going to follow the same procedure that what we have been doing till now okay so first let us do the forced vibration phase okay so for pulse type excitation we would always divide our response in forced vibration phase okay and then the free vibration phase okay and then we will try to obtain the response so this is basically my forced vibration phase and this is my free vibration phase okay so for this case let us first obtain the response for forced vibration phase and see what do we get okay so for forced vibration the equation that i have is this and we already know the response for okay this type of loading okay we had already derived this this is nothing but a, a step force okay so the response for this we have already obtained as ut 
bracket divided by UST naught. This we had obtained as 1 minus cos omega nt, which can be further written as 1 minus cos 2 pi t by tn. Okay, and remember this response is valid only for time smaller than the td, which is the time duration of the pulse. Okay, once this is clear, let us obtain the response for free vibration phase. Okay, so we want to obtain the response for free vibration phase. And for free vibration phase, it is nothing but a free vibration with initial conditions as u of td and u dot of td. Okay, that was imparted to the system due to the forced vibration. Okay, so we are going to utilize these initial conditions and find out the response in the free vibration. So, ut is nothing but u of td cos omega n. And remember, now because the initial conditions are at td, okay, I am going to write this equation like this. Okay, so this is my expression. So I can go ahead and substitute these values, okay, from the expression here, okay, and simplify it to get the final response, okay. So final response that I get here is actually cos omega n t minus td minus cos omega n t. Remember, this is the response for t greater than td. Okay, we can further simplify this and write omega n t equal to 2 pi by, uh, sorry, 2 pi t by divided by t n. Okay, so that would give us this expression here. Okay, 2 pi t d divided by t n times sine 2 pi t by t n minus half t t by t n. Okay. So, this is the response that we get for t greater than t d. Okay. And if you look at it, this is nothing but this sine function. Okay. So, let us call this sine theta or whatever. And it is multiplied with this coefficient here, which is constant. Okay. So, it does not depend on time. It is actually a function of t d by t n. Okay, so the normalized response, if you look at here, okay, this is actually UAT by UST naught. Okay, this system actually vibrates again at its natural frequency. Okay, and it depends on the ratio TD by TN. Okay, so like for the case when we had the forced vibration of a uh, uh, single degree of freedom system subject to harmonic excitation there the important parameter was omega by omega and for a step function with finite rise time or ramp function the parameter was rise time divided by the time period okay for pulse type motions we will see the important parameter is actually td by tn okay so basically my system when applied to this oscillates about its static position okay at time period of oscillation of tn okay and basically we can plot these functions okay we can plot ut by ust naught okay for different value of td by tn and i'm going to just uh, bring that figure just to explain you how does it look like okay So, if you look at here, okay, depending upon the value of td by tn, all right, we have obtained basically different response histories here. Okay, so I have obtained ut by ust naught. Okay, and what I have done here basically combined the response for ut by ust naught. Okay, for free vib for forced vibration phase and the free vibration phase. Okay, and these are the curves that we get. Okay. And if you look at this carefully, depending upon the value of Td by Tn, 
okay the maximum can occur okay during the forced phase okay or during the free vibration phase like in these two cases okay and this happens when td by tn actually below the value of 1 by 2 okay like in these cases then the peak occurs after the value of td okay let us get into that okay we have these responses let us let us get into that uh, one thing that uh, we just need to uh, focus here that when we applied the load p naught over the time duration td my system actually starts vibrating about a shifted equilibrium position which is p naught by k and when i remove the load it comes back to its original position which is u equal to 0 and then it vibrates about this position okay even though the amplitude is different the same type of behavior is observed for different value of td by tn except again for these cases where td by tn is actually an integer when that is the case then what happens at the end of the forced vibration phase we basically get u td equal to 0 and u dot td equal to 0 okay when td by tn is equal to any integer okay 1 2 3 like that okay so for those cases okay after the completion of the forced vibration phase we do not see any response okay so the system just sits there okay and which can again be interpreted in terms of uh, you know uh, vibration about equilibrium that if you are having a system that is vibrating and it comes to equilibrium and at that point if you have zero velocity and it is in equilibrium then there won't be any further oscillation because you do not have any velocity or you do not have any initial condition to take the system above that because your force is now zero okay and if your initial conditions are also zero zero then there won't be any subsequent motion so that's why for these cases we obtain behavior which is something like this okay so just to see that how the system beha uh, behaves subject to different uh, values of td by tn now let us come back okay to finding the maximum response or finding the maximum value of this okay so finding maximum of this which is nothing but peak dynamic displacement divided by peak static displacement and as previously described this is basically the response modification factor okay and this response modification factor okay let us obtain that for for free vibration phase and forced vibration phase and overall rd would be maximum okay of both okay so let us first obtain rd okay let us see what is the value of rd for forced vibration okay the value of rd was okay, we had the expression 1 minus cos 2 pi t by tn okay so this was my expression so the maximum value of this function is what it is equal to 2 which occurs at cos 2 pi by t by tn when it is equal to minus 1 then i get the maximum response as this one and for that to occur okay so it could be minus 1 minus 2 and so on okay so for those that condition let us see what is my t by tn okay if i substitute it here i would basically get 2 pi t by tn as pi 2 pi and so on so my t by tn is actually tn by 2 okay then tn 3 tn by 2 and like that okay so basically the maximum response occurs at these durations okay and for at least one maximum to occur okay at least one maximum to occur can you imagine that my t by tn should at least be greater than tn by 2 okay or 
that scenario let us say this is td here sorry not t okay so just correct that okay can you imagine okay it would achieve a value of 2 only if td by tn is greater than tn by 2 okay so the maximum of this function the maximum of rd during forced vibration phase would be 2 only if okay td by tn is greater than this expression here okay so here maybe i should not write td by tn just write td here okay that gives me from this expression i become this okay so it has to be greater than half that means i would have at least one peak of function that i have here and let us try to understand that graphically as well so i have this function one and this function minus cos 2 pi t by tn so basically what i'm saying this is one here okay and and then i'm going to draw minus cos 2 pi td by tn let us see how does it look like okay this is a function basically which starts from minus 1 okay and it goes to a value of okay basically something like this okay so for it to achieve a maximum value if i sum this up it would look like something like this shifted by okay so th this is the first peak that occurs and that occurs at tn by 2 the second peak occurs at 3n by 3tn by 2 and so on okay and if i sum this up this would look like this whole thing would be shifted by one upwards okay so it would look like something like this okay this is the response due to the during the forced vibration phase all right so let us say this is u here this is the value equal to 2 okay and i will say that this is u naught by ust naught so this is 2 and this is t by tn okay or if you t you'll write it as t here then it would be tn by 2 3 n by 2 so i'm just writing here as half okay 3 by 2 and so on so what i see here this would achieve a value of 2 only if my td by tn is greater than this value half okay so i hope you understand this this is the expression that i have for rd and this expression can achieve a value up to 2 provided this condition is satisfied okay so cos 2 pi t t by tn at least becomes minus 1 minus 2 and like that okay and for that to happen my td has to be greater than tn by 2 so i will write rd is equal to 2 if my td is greater than tn by 2 so the question comes well what happens if td by okay if td is smaller than tn by 2 well then the maximum response would be during the forced vibration phase whatever the response as at t equal to td is okay which basically we have cos 2 pi td by tn so it would be just same value and you put the value of td here so if you look at here if you substitute td by tn equal to half then it becomes 2 okay but the duration always might not be large enough so that you can have at least one peak during the forced vibration phase okay so i have obtained two expressions two conditional expression for the maximum during the forced vibration phase let us now go into the free vibration phase so for free vibration phase basically we know that okay system undergoes free vibration with initial conditions as ut and ut dot t naught and i know that if a system is undergoing free vibration with these initial condition the amplitude of vibration can always be obtained as using this expression here okay and this is from your free vibration class okay it is 
So in that case, it was u0 square here. That initial condition is at t equal to td. Okay, so this is here. And you can substitute the value of u of td and u dot of td to obtain the expression for u0. Okay, when you substitute this, you basically get this as 2 of ust naught, okay, times sine of, okay, this under root terms is actually a square. So, when you take the root, it comes as sine of pi td by tn, okay. So, that my rd becomes u0 ust naught, this becomes 2 sine pi t by tn okay all right so basically what did we see here okay we saw that during the forced vibration phase okay depending upon the value of td by tn okay the maximum could be 2 or maximum could be this okay if td is smaller than tn by 2 then what happens actually okay then what happens in that case, my response is still increasing. Okay. And this response is basically, okay, so this is let us say ut. Okay. This response here is basically your u of td. And then there is some velocity here as well. But the maximum response then occurs during the free vibration phase. Okay, and this is for the case when let us say td by tn is here. Okay, this is smaller than half here. Okay, if this is greater than half, then this peak would be inside that. Okay, for that case, so the response is so for that case. Okay, when td by tn is smaller than half, the maximum occurs during the free vibration phase, and that maximum is actually this value. So if we combine both. Okay, what do we actually get? Okay, so if you combine the forced vibration phase and the free vibration phase, I can get one expression for Rd, which would be equal to Rd equal to UST naught. Okay, this should be equal to 2 sine pi Td by Tn. Okay, this is for Td by Tn is smaller than half. Okay, so as I said, this is going to cover the peak is going to occur during the free vibration phase if td by tn is smaller than half and if it is greater than half then the peak occurs during the forced vibration phase and it is equal to 2 okay and you can go ahead and plot these two functions okay so i'm just going to get you the final figure that we have here okay let me just uh, copy this Okay, so this is basically what I'm saying. Okay, let me write this here. This is forced vibration. Remember, this is for free response is actually okay. Free response is for free response. I have two of sine pi T D by T N. Okay, forced response is basically when it is smaller than half td by tn is smaller than half this value is basically here which is 1 minus cos pi td 2 pi td sorry 2 pi td by tn and if it is greater than half it is 2 so if you take the envelope of both these functions you get basically the overall maxima in this one this is governed by the free response Okay, and this function is basically 2 sine pi td by tn. And this is basically the value equal to 2. Alright, so if you look at it, we are able to obtain the rd as a function of td by tn. Okay, and this is similar when we have obtained rd for a harmonic excitation as function of omega by omega n. Or for a ramp loading, we had obtained this as function of tr by tn in this case we are obtaining as a function of td which is the load duration divided by the time period of the system
okay and this is the plot of peak response okay versus some function of t either directly as a function of tn or some multiple of tn it is called a response spectra okay so plot of peak response of a single degree of freedom system versus its time period is called response spectra okay and it is a very useful tool that is used by designers in industry for example not everybody is going to obtain the differential equation then go through all those calculation and get the peak response okay if this chart is available okay so let us say this chart is given to us for a rectangular pulse loading then say you have a structure of time period tn all right and you know that a load duration a rectangular pulse is being applied with a load duration td okay so that you can find out the td by tn okay and what i'm saying here that you know tn and you know this load here that is being applied so basically p naught and td is known to you okay and tn is also known to you so if those parameters are known to you, you don't have to solve any differential equation you can find out the maximum value of u naught as rd times ust naught okay and rd can be directly obtained here so let us say for any given value of td by tn you can just go here and then find out what is the value of td by tn okay and if you know u naught then you can also find out the equivalent static force in the structure as k u naught assuming that it is represented as a single degree of freedom system so i'm saying if you can represent this building as a single degree of freedom system okay something like this with k and m then for that case okay the equivalent static forces okay k times the peak dynamic displacement which we can further obtain as k times rd and ust naught which is basically p naught by the stiffness of the structure so the equivalent static force is basically rd times the peak static force okay all right so with this the discussion on rectangular pulse duration actually concludes we are going to extend the same procedure to find out the response for other type of pulses in the subsequent classes okay all right thank you very much